This video is about fake stories about China, about 100 years old wine, 1000 years old wine, and even 2000 years of wine. And it's about Chinese most beloved alcoholic beverages, where the number one beverage is yellow wine. Hello and ni hao from the beautiful Wuxi city. China has an amazing big variety of national and local alcoholic beverages deep embedded in traditions and culture some of them with a fascinating history. There are so many thousands of different kinds, brands and variations of alcoholic beverages that no one could ever try them all in a lifetime. You can imagine how much history, culture and interesting facts are there involved after 5000 years of history, archaeological findings even dating further back. In such a huge country filled with over a billion people. There are literally hundreds if not thousands of captivating stories still untold and ready to be discovered. There is sure no need to make up stories and tell some lies or make fantastic stories even more fantastic. Right? But people do exactly that. And that makes me angry. Have a look. <laughs> So here the statement is opening a 100 years old wine. And indeed, it looks quite strange and old, doesn't it? Obviously, it is closed with some leaves under the heavy cover. No plastic or other modern material to see. Looks really old. 100 years before was just 1924. We know that there are many wines which are even older than 100 years and still drinkable. And the wine even still looks pretty good. So. It might be possible, right? But unfortunately, it is fake. No further information is given. It is all about clickbait. I will tell you what it really is. But let me first show you some more. Because on YouTube, people can even get more clicks the more they exaggerate. And more clicks bring more money, right? 1000 years old wine. This is what 1000 year old wine looks like. These guys from Simple Facts uncovered this case of wine which had been sealed for a very long time. Wine is actually safe to drink for up to 1,500 years and most wine actually tastes better the older it gets. This case was very well sealed, but they finally managed to get it open. What do you think people can learn from that fake information? Absolutely nothing, right? How believable do you find it that someone opens a 1000 years old wine just outside with bare hands? He also said, finally, they found out how to crack it open. <laughs> Makes same no sense as the fact that the packaging is exactly the same as the first wine. And although it is allegedly 900 years older than the first one, the packaging is still in even better condition. All is fake. It's all fake. All is fake. But wait for it. The same guy, as he found that he gets a lot of clicks for that one, well, he puts one more online. 2000 years old wine. When these guys first discovered this extremely old case of wine, they thought it might be around 100 years old. But after doing research on the pot itself and the sealing method, they discovered it could be up to 2000 years old. This is extremely rare and usually makes the wine very expensive as it can still be safe to drink even after such a long period of time. Let me know if you would still try it. Now we are already at 2000 years. Same guy, same channel, same nonsense and same fake news. Just for clickbait. Just for advertising money. From clicks. Do you think he serves his audience with that or simply himself? Not at all caring that some people might even fall for this fake. I try always to do my research as well as possible to avoid reporting anything wrong or overlooking important information and ask my fellow Chinese tons of questions to be sure that I haven't understood anything wrong. It takes unbelievable much time and energy. But then I see those guys on YouTube who don't research at all who just copy a random scene from China, then making up a sensational fake story which can be debunked within 5 minutes of research. Finally, they put the craziest clickbait title on it and publish that. Most people watching that haven't ever been to China, don't know anything about China and believe that nonsense probably easily. 
Consequently, they get completely wrong ideas, knowledge and opinions about the country and maybe even disgrace themselves in the next conversation with their fake knowledge. Sorry for the rant, now I feel better. And I promise to tell you what you really see in those videos. Sorry if that disappoints you now, but these wines are usually not older than 25 years at max. Sounds a little boring compared to wine from Jesus times, but especially this wine has a beautiful story which is at least true. It is traditionally yellow wine which is made from glutinous sticky rice, the so-called normi. This special yellow wine is called Nua Hom Huangqiu, which means daughter's red yellow wine which is on purpose filled into such pottery jars, closed carefully with bamboo leaves, having clay on top, then another layer of bamboo leaves, fixed with a piece of cord and finally sealed with the pottery cover. Why do they do that? Because this special wine is bought by the family father when his daughter is born. And then he buries the wine vessel in the earth, in the best case under a osmanthus tree, while the daughter grows up, the wine in the earth matures as well and grows its wonderful flavor. And when the daughter is going to marry, then the wine will be dug up again and drunk during the wedding celebration. This is the main reason why the vessel looks so old. And the name Daughter's Red comes from the custom that the brides in China traditionally wear red wedding dress. The custom to bury the wine for daughter's marriage is mainly done in the area of Zhejiang and Jiangsu province. So sorry, not 2000 years old. Daughters should latest be married before 30 years of age in China, ideally in their early 20s. Nowadays that changed a little and women marry on average a little later due to education and career, but the custom still continues anyway. Okay, I hope that did it for the debunking of 2000 years old wine, but there is much more interesting stuff like how does yellow wine taste, how is it made, are there any more traditions linked with it and what's its history? Glad you asked. Yellow wine, the so-called Huangqiu, can range in color from pale yellow to amber and might sometimes even be slightly red colored. The taste is pretty sweet, although there are a few dry variations as well. It tastes rich and quite mellow with fruity or floral notes and it sometimes has slightly nutty or earthy undertones. Although its alcohol content ranging from 8% to over 20%, it still has a very mild alcoholic kick, which makes it easy to drink too much and possibly afterwards regret that. Especially now during the colder season, it is often served warm to slightly hot, which makes it even more aromatic and delicious. It matures in quite complex and slowly ways. Good ones are matured over years to decades, which makes it such a good choice to use it for the daughter's red, where it is kept for decades undisturbed and climatized under the earth. How is it made? Well, traditionally lots of self-sufficient farmers would simply produce the pottery jars by themselves from local clay, dry them carefully and burn them with whatever possibilities they have in their villages from bonfire to oven or kiln. Here in Jiangnan, in the south of uh, Jiangsu province, where the custom of daughter's red is at home, it is also easy to grow glutinous rice or simply buy it from the local market. Finally, one one only needs good water and to get some fermentation starter which is called chiu chu which is no problem as Chinese are fermentation masters of pretty much everything. For example soy sauce, tofu, vinegar, pickled vegetables and of course all kinds of alcoholic products like this yellow wine as well. In fact, locations all over China have their own individual fermentation starters, which consists of a unique mixture of molds, yeast and bacteria, reflecting a large amount of regional diversity in flavor and aroma of the finished products. The sticky rice is washed and then steamed to cook it soft. Then it cools down to room temperature in a fermentation container. And the fermentation starter is mixed evenly into this moist mesh. 
Usually, the container is kept in a dark, warm place and just covered with some clean cloth that the fermentation mixture can still breathe and in the coming weeks starch is broken into sugar and sugar transformed into alcohol. When the yellow wine reaches the desired flavor, the solids are being strained out, leaving the liquid. Depending on the desired taste, sugar, water, osmanthus blossoms or even medicinal herbs can be added. Finally, the wine might be pasteurized and filtered to stop the fermentation immediately and it is now filled into the clean pottery jar closed with the bamboo leaves, some cord, clay, more bamboo leaves and the lid on top. Now the daughter's red yellow wine is ready for its aging and to bury it. Finally, those wines develop a beautiful aroma already within weeks of aging. But the longer they age, the more complex and fuller gets the flavor and aroma. Hopefully, daughter's marriage will be as sweet and lovely and at least as long living as this wine. Cheers! Of course, nowadays people usually buy their yellow wine, which is made in some factories. In our area, a lot of this wine comes from Shaoxing in Zhejiang province. Some years ago, one of the factories there even caught the name Nuarong or Daughter's Red to profit from this traditional name. But people knew anyway that they have not much to do with that tradition. Ah, and my city Wuxi also has two famous factories for this type of yellow wine. The alcoholic beverage is really very appreciated and widespread throughout China and is connected to lots of traditions. But that is no surprise considering its wonderful flavor and its long history. The history of Chinese alcoholic beverages, referred as Chiu, which means alcohol, dates back to pre-recorded times. Evidence from residues found in potteries dating back 9000 years suggests that grape wine, early forms of beer and even yellow wine or rice wine were already being enjoyed by Neolithic communities in what is now modern China. Further on, they used honey to produce meat and even hawthorn, it appears that the production methods were similar to those employed in Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt. By the way, previously the earliest archaeological evidence for grapevine making dates back from 8000 years ago in Georgia. So these findings from the archaeological sites in Jiahu, China, show clear evidence that people in China even 1000 years earlier independently from the Near East invented and enjoyed wine made from the wild Amur grape which is a species of grape native to the Asian continent. Its name comes from the Amur Valley in Russia and China. It's in this border region between those two countries. But anyway, beer, wine and meat never grew big in China. Grape wine consumption was once widely present in Northern Bronze Age China. However, it was replaced by consumption of a range of alcoholic beverages made from sorghum, millet, rice and fruits such as lychee or Asian plum. It was especially the Huangqiu, the yellow wine, that won the hearts and made China mostly forget about beer and wine. Yellow wine is made from a variety of fermented grains, primarily rice, but also wheat, millet and sorghum. But in the case of the daughter's red, sticky rice must be used for the best flavor and aroma. Its history can be traced back over 2500 years. And it has been a significant part of Chinese culture and cuisine, maybe a little comparable with the big influence of beer in the societies throughout Europe's history. There are several regional variations of yellow wine, each with its unique production methods and flavor profiles. Notable types of yellow wine include Shaoxing wine, Chiafan wine and Shanxi aged vinegar. Yes, you heard right. Yellow wine makes a perfect aromatic vinegar and the wine itself as well as its vinegar are widely used in Chinese cuisine. Yellow wine is often added to marinades, braising liquids and sauces to enhance flavor. It is commonly used in dishes like drunken chicken, sui chi, where chicken is marinated in yellow wine and various braised dishes to add depth of flavor or it's directly consumed by the chef. 
A special yellow wine variation for cooking, which we also use at home, is Liaoqiu, also known as Shaoxing wine. It is a type of Chinese rice wine named after the region of Shaoxing in Zhejiang province and is a key ingredient in Chinese cooking used in marinades, stir fries and braised dishes. It adds depth of flavor and helps to remove any undesirable odors from certain ingredients. It is commonly used in dishes such as drunken shrimp, sui xia, where shrimps are marinated in liaoqiu and hong shao ro, a classic braised pork belly dish, which is one of our famous foods here in Wuxi. Here in Wuxi city, we traditionally use chenxiang vinegar, chenxiang xiangzu, a type of black rice vinegar with a slightly sweet malty flavor as it comes from nearby city of Chenxian. Other places use a shanxi aged vinegar which is pretty much the same. Both are made from sticky rice. Chenxian vinegar is used in various Chinese dishes especially in braised and stir-fried dishes as well as in dipping sauces. Typical dishes it is commonly used in dishes like sweet and sour pork where the vinegar contributes to the tangy flavor of the sauce and in cold dishes like shredded tofu salad or simply to dip dumplings into it. It's all so delicious. That's one of the reasons why I can never lose weight here. <laughs> Okay, now you know China's alcoholic beverage number one, the fantastic yellow wine, and you won't ever fall for fake 2000 year old fake wine fake news. By the way, alcoholic beverage number two would be Baijiu, which is a colorless Chinese liquor, typically coming with 35 to 60% alcohol by volume and is mostly made from sorghum. It's probably around here since the Han Dynasty and now the most famous brand is the Mao Tai, but that, as well as Chinese drink etiquette and other kinds of alcoholic beverages of China are stories for another time as I don't want to make that video too long. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you don't want to miss the next videos. You hitting the subscribe button would also help my tiny channel a lot. So thanks for your support and thanks for watching. Cheers and goodbye. Your Lama in China.